Uh, today we're going to be talking about navigating our reports within the web client. I'm running version 8.3 here today, and you should be like you are. So, okay, I've started out here on the welcome page, and to access reports, then we have a reporting area down the left-hand side of the screen on our nav bar called reports. I'm just going to click on that, and that's going to show us all of our reports attached to our Info CRM. When I say attached to our Info CRM, these are actually uh, crystal reports written in the crystal report writer. We access them or we add them in via the architect uh, so that they're visible within the web client here. And I'll go show you where they're actually added in in a little bit here. So in the reports, then we see our different reports. We have schedules here if you schedule reports to be ran. And the history here showing you any reports that you have ran already. So under reports here, over on the right-hand side then, I have under the different filters, I have the family so I can, lay, uh, I can narrow it down to different families like labels or let me uncheck these here. Or I see here I've got six contact reports. So here I've got a contact detail, contact address report, uh, contact phone book. So if I want to run, for example, the contact address book, I can highlight that. Over on the right-hand side, then in the common tasks area, you see where you have run report or schedule report. Now, if I click on schedule report, it'll allow me to run that report at a different time. So I can choose create the job schedule to run on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, um, from one date to a certain date. I can choose who I'm going to run it as, the administrator, and what format I'm going to output it in. If I want to run that report immediately, I'm just going to click on Run Report. And it brings up that screen again. Now here you see that it says, do you want your report to run for all records? Uh, specific conditions or current user. So when I say current user, this would only be records that this user has access to. If I go into specific conditions, you see here it says match, uh, show records that match, and I can choose here, it says specific conditions, and then we can say all or any. So if we say all, it's kind of like using uh, the word and, A-N-D. Uh, it would be one condition and the next condition and the next condition. Where if I say any, that's like using the word or. It'd be matching one condition or the next condition or the next condition. So I'm going to say all in this case. Click on next. Then it asks me what do I want to output that. I can output it in PDF, in Excel, a CSV, comma separated values, in an XML or a Word document. I'll just leave it as PDF. I can choose who I want to run it as. There my report is running. It's at 75%. Once that's at 100%, it says it's completed successfully, and it gives me a hyperlink here. So now to open that report, we just click on that hyperlink. And then down in the bottom here, I can click on Open, and it's going to open that report for me in the PDF format that we chose to, to export it as. Now, if I wanted to access that report again later, I closed it down now. But underneath my History tab is that report still residing in that PDF format if I want to access it again. Now, it's not going to be updated with any new information. It's only be the, going to be the information as of 2.6 at 2.09 p.m., but it is still sitting there if you want to see that report again. Now, some of the reports, let me go back here to reports again, and let's go look at, um, well, that still might be fine. Let's go look at the contact detail report and run that. I'm going to say specific conditions. and say all again. Now, on this report, you see that we have some questions here. 
Now, these are questions that were added directly into the report so that as we run the report, it's going to ask these parameter questions. Would you like to start each contact on a new page, yes or no? Do you want to include opportunities or lead source information, um, activity information, historical information, or historical notes? So you can answer yes or no to any of those. And click on Next, and then it would run that report. I'm not going to run that because that would be pretty large for all contacts. But you can see there how it would have the specific uh, questions for that report based on the fact that they were written into the report as parameter questions within the report. Let's look at another one here. Let's go to accounts and look at the account detail report and run that. And we'll say, let's look at specific conditions. And we'll say, click the plus sign there. And we want to add other conditions here. So when I click the plus sign to add other conditions, we're saying match by. And we can choose date range, group, query, or user. Now, depending on how your report was set up uh, determines whether these are available to you or not. Um, let me go back here. So we got date, range, group, query, or user. I'm going to jump back to my server once, and this is the account detail. And on my server, I'm going to close that services window. And I think I have my architect open here already. And look in my architect under Manage Reports. And under the report account reports, we're looking at the account detail. So I'm going to highlight that, right click on that, and just go to Edit. So it's going to show me the properties of this report. So in the properties of this report, it's showing me what table it's coming off of, the account table. And it's showing me a master user field, account manager ID, and a master date field, modify date. That user field and that date field that are listed there is what determines what is being used on those fields when you actually run the report. So now let's go back and look at the user and the date field on that report. So when we say a date range here, they're talking about the modify date, because that's what we saw in the architect under the properties. If we choose a user here and choose a user, say we choose uh, Kathy Hughes here, when it looks for Kathy Hughes, it's going to be looking at the modify user, not the create user, not the create date. So it's the modify user and the modify date that they're using for those two fields. So that you do need to be aware of when you're creating, uh, when you're using a condition within these groups here. It, this date range and the user are determined back in the architect when you actually set up that report. So I'll just cancel that for now. But we can add several conditions in there. If I go in and say uh, plus again, and we'll say a group, I can go out and choose my account group then that I want to run this report for. That's one condition. And I can add other conditions. So I can add several different conditions in there. Now, normally the way I like to do it is actually go out and create my account re account group first, and then just come in and choose that group. That's probably the easiest way to do it. But once I have my group chosen, this is all customers, I can click on next year. Now again, I have the parameter fields, but these are parameter fields that were set up within the crystal report. So we'd have to answer these questions again. Click on next again. I'm going to run it as PDF and click on finish. There it starts to run, 75%. 
Hopefully it doesn't take too long here. Hopefully I didn't have too big of a group in my customers there. Because remember, it's running all the historical information, all the activity information, all the lead source information for each account in my customers group. So this could take a few minutes. So be aware uh, when you run a report how many records you're running it on. There it goes. So then we can click on the hyperlink here to open our records comes up down in the bottom of the screen here. I'm going to click on Open again. Here's my record. The first one, Abbott Limited, shows me the contacts, all the contacts in that record. Um, continues on here, more contacts, more contacts, more contacts. Then it goes into the activities here. Shows me all the activities against that account, all the opportunities against that account. It uh, looks like this is the history. I missed the label someplace in there. All the history. So it's got quite a bit of information on just that one account. And it goes through each account that is a customer in my database. So however I built that group off a customer, uh, that's the records that it's bringing in here. So that didn't actually take too long considering it was a 400-page report that ran it. And remember, that's going to show up in history also. So back in my server again, um, as we saw, I went into manage, let me close this, manage reports. This is where I access my reports to add a new report in here. So if you have a crystal report that's not in uh, Infor CRM at this time, you can just click on this white icon. You'd go find your report, and once you open it, then you would end up with a screen like this where you have to fill in what family you want it to show up in. It would put the original file name right here, whether you were going to have filtering uh, on the master user and the master date field. And you can see here it's showing you that it's going to show groups, the users, and dates. Now, if you don't want to see those in those conditions, you could uncheck those. Once you add that in there, that would be included in your account reports here and also visible in your web client. You can also edit your reports here just by launching uh, your reports, launch, launch the Crystal Report system right from here. Now normally your Crystal Reports full version is loaded on your server. That's not going to be loaded on each individual computer. So wherever, wherever you're going to build or create those reports, that's where you would install your full version of Crystal Reports and edit them and change them from there if, if you're going to do that. Otherwise, just the runtime files are installed when you install your uh, client. Um, and you don't, you don't have to do anything for that. Once you have your web client, they would just run. Like I said, the only thing you might need to know about is the fact that you need to restart that job server service. If your reports aren't running, like mine weren't there, um, just go restart that service and you should be good to go. Now, if you got any other questions about Crystal Reports um, and running them within the web client, certainly let us know. I'd be more than happy to answer. Um, I want to thank you all for joining me this afternoon, and have a great day.